Hello friends! Welcome to my channel, or back to my channel as the case may be. Today I'm going to share another story about Coyote. Because, as I said in my last video, well, last mythology video, I got this beautiful painting that's titled Conjure Coyote. And so I'm kind of doing a, a run around deep dive into the various myths of Coyote that I can find, of which there are thousands. So this is just another one of many. This one is an experience between coyote and skunk tricking the rabbits and the prairie dogs. So as I keep saying, this is only one possible telling of the tale. It is not a definitive edition. There are many variations. This particular version comes to us from the Crow Nation of North America. There was once a place where many rabbits and prairie dogs lived. Coyote heard of this and decided that he was going to travel there, but he was flummoxed because how was he supposed to catch them? So as he considered this, he sat down by the river and thought, and he thought, and he thought, and he thought until Skunk wandered by. Sitting by the river, he had come up with an idea which he then shared with Skunk, which was perhaps they could divert the water and drown all the rabbits and prairie dogs. Then he would be able to eat his fill with hardly any effort. Skunk heard this and thought, you may have, it. You may have an idea there, Coyote, but I think we can make it better. Skunk wandered upstream until he found some slime grass. The slime grass was gross, slimy, almost had the appearance of maggots. And he told Coyote, I bet if we cover you with this slime grass, they'll think you're dead. And then they'll get close to you. So Coyote thought, yeah, that's a good idea. So he laid on a piece of driftwood and allowed Skunk to surround him with the slime grass, where he poked some in his armpits and around his legs, laid it across his back and around his tail. After this was done, and Coyote looked suitably deceased, Skunk went to the rabbits and the prairie dogs and said, Behold, Coyote has died! The great threat on our lives is over. Come and see, come and see. Naturally, the rabbits and prairie dogs were suspicious, and they did not want to come. So Skunk continued telling them of the miraculous end of Coyote, but it took a while to convince them. And while Skunk was doing his convincing, Coyote was feeling oh so warm between the sun and being on the warm log and covered in the slimy grass he thought you know a little rain would be nice to cool me down it only needs to reach my legs and to his great surprise a few moments after thinking this a cloud came over and started sprinkling the coyote was still uncomfortably hot he thought you know Maybe we just need more rain. That would cool me down. And so more clouds gathered and rain fell heavier and heavier upon him, enough to lift the log and float it downstream. To his surprise, he still had to pretend to be dead. And so he just laid there, waiting to see where he would end up. Eventually, Skunk returned to where he had left Coyote, but could not find him, could not find the log, could not find the grass. But seeing the evidence of a recent rain, thought, I bet he's downstream. So Skunk trundled his way downstream until he came across what appeared to be a very dead coyote. Seeing that the grass had been disturbed by the rain, he told Coyote, continue lying there as if you're dead. I'll fix up the grass. Someone should be by shortly. And it was true. For soon, two rabbits came out of the woods to see if what Skunk had said was true. Specifically, it was jackrabbit and white rabbit. But being timid creatures, they decided, you know, he does look dead, but we know Coyote is a trickster. Coyote lies. Prove it to us, Skunk. Prove it that he is actually dead. So Skunk grabbed a stick and gave Coyote's belly a quick rap, a poke, a smack. Coyote did an admirable job of not responding. So the two rabbits conferred and discussed amongst themselves and agreed 
Yes, Coyote was most likely dead. Hearing the rabbits agree with Skunk, some of the prairie dogs and other creatures came to see. As more of the animals became curious, Skunk said, you know, we should have a celebration. We should sing and dance for our enemy is dead. The rabbits and the prairie dogs thought this was an excellent idea. And so they dragged the log to, off of the shore to a drier patch of land and began dancing in a circle around Coyote. While they were in the middle of their dance, Skunk pointed skyward and said, Wait, is that the shadow of Hawk? And as the revelers panicked, Skunk lifted his tail and sprayed them all in the eyes, blinding them. Coyote then picked up the sticks with which he had been smacked and started wailing on all the rabbits and the prairie dogs. Only a very few managed to get away. Coyote built a fire and instructed Skunk to bring over the rabbits and prairie dogs. Skunk kind of grumbled because he was doing all the work. Coyote had only laid there, except for the last moment. But Skunk was also hungry, and so as Coyote built the fire, Skunk brought over four large loads of rabbit and prairie dog. Then Coyote told Skunk to bury the rabbits and the prairie dogs with only their tails sticking out. Grumbling some more, Skunk recognized what Coyote was doing, trying to get him to do all the work. While this meat was slowly cooking, Coyote instructed Skunk to rest in the shade with him, because Skunk would... because Coyote was also hatching a plan. Coyote said, you know, I'm bored while the meat is cooking. Maybe we should have a race. And to make it more interesting, whoever wins the race can eat all the rabbits and all the prairie dogs. Skunk said, but your legs are longer than mine, and you are a much swifter runner than I. And Coyote said, what, you do not like the wager? I mean, just only to that mountain over there. Skunk said, to that mountain? Oh, that's much too far for me to run. How about this? You give me a head start, and then we will have an, a fair race. So Coyote laughed and said, sure. I'll wait until you reach the far side of that hill. Hearing Coyote make this promise, Skunk trundled off, ran up and over the hill, and then immediately found a badger hole, which he dove inside and pulled some sagebrush over. Moments later, Coyote ran past, heading towards the mountain. Skunk waited until he could no longer hear nor smell Coyote, pushed the sagebrush out of the way, and then returned to where the meat was cooking. The rabbits and the prairie dogs were juicy and tender, and knowing that he had quite some time before Coyote came back, he pulled them up one by one and ate them until there was nothing left but the tails. He then placed the tails back, sticking up out of the ground, before trundling off on his merry way, not wanting to be present when Coyote got back. Eventually, Coyote returned from the mountain. He had not seen Skunk all the way there or back, but figured it must be because he just didn't notice as he ran past. Boy, was Coyote hungry. So Coyote eagerly grabbed one of the tails, which came right off in his hand. He thought, oh, they must be so juicy and tender that the tails are coming right off. But as he dug in the earth, he could not find a single rabbit or prairie dog, for Skunk had eaten them all. Realizing Skunk's deception, Coyote screamed and yelled, this is all Skunk's fault. He deceived me. When I find you, Skunk, I'm gonna kill you. To this day, this is why we do not see Skunk and Coyote together. For any time Skunk smells the smell of Coyote, he hides himself for fear that Coyote will kill him. I hope you enjoyed this story. I've really enjoyed digging into more of this mythology around Coyote and the various antics he gets up to. It's also fun seeing how the different tribes view Coyote slightly differently. He's always a trickster. He's always making messes. But some see him as a slightly more friendly character than others. If you're enjoying this content, consider subscribing. I am releasing tarot spreads most mornings, uh, weekday mornings, and mythology videos on the afternoons. 
Longer videos are in the works and will typically be showing up Saturdays, but those are going to be hit or miss because it depends on how long it takes me to film them. Until next time, walk in the light, my friends. Bye!